A crucial National Security Council meeting ends with recommendations to achieve sustainable peace and stability ahead of 2019 general elections. Federal government reiterates commitment to polio eradication. Plus, Nigerian army receives encomium in the fight against insurgency. These and more on today's panorama. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. <laughs> A crucial meeting of the National Security Council has ended in the State House with far reaching recommendations aimed at achieving sustainable peace and stability in the country ahead of the 2019 elections. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that the meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari resolved to deploy adequate security agencies to the states towards ensuring peaceful and hitch free conduct of the elections. Members noted with concern the attempt by some desperate personalities to put pressure on INEC through demonstrations which was brought under control by combined efforts of the security agencies. The meeting also discussed how to nip in the bud post-election violence as well as stem the proliferation of weapons by disgruntled elements with a desire to take laws into their hands at the slightest opportunity. The Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, spoke with two newsmen after the meeting. He deliberated on the, you know, the challenges we have of security during elections. Especially most of the elections have been conducted in the in most of the states of the federation. Mm. And, and you are still going to face another election in the future. What guarantee are you going to give that the election? Obviously, the guarantees are. Well, you know, what I would say is that every Nigerian obviously should be commit, committed to a free, fair, and uh, credible election. I think that's the main issue. Every Nigerian has that responsibility, and obviously, I'm assuring Nigerians that we'll do our best to provide adequate security for these elections. Oh. Very, very free and fair election, and that's what we're going to continue to do. And the generals are going to expect that at the general election? Obviously. We're assuring Nigeria that we'll give them a very, very credible election. President Buhari also met separately with the governors of Kebi, Ekiti, and Akwaibom states behind closed doors. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has promised never to turn blind eye to acts of economic sabotage, warning that anyone who abuses public trust under his watch will be dealt with appropriately. The president said that this while playing host to Kennywood entertainers to a special dinner. Again, State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. Without doubt, President Muhammad Buhari enjoys tremendous support, solidarity, and goodwill from the various stakeholders in the house of him industry, otherwise referred to as Kani Wood. Although the event was put together by the Nigerian leader to show appreciation for the entertainers, however, comprising musicians, producers, and actors, it is an opportunity to renew their allegiance to the change agenda. We believe in his leadership. He is somebody that is committed to the development of this country. We are here to show our support, 100%, for his second tenure. We have to support him because of good governance for Nigerians and Nigerians. President Muhammad Buhari formally expressed gratitude to the Carnival entertainers for their love and significant contributions to his political aspirations so far, saying he cannot thank them enough. He, however, promised to reciprocate by maintaining his upright disposition as well as ensuring justice at all times and selflessness in service to the nation and humanity. He restated his unshakable resolve towards fighting corruption to a standstill, firmly securing Nigeria for effective management and massively diversifying the economy for job creation and sustainable future. <laughs> Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boz Mustafa, described the engagement as significant. In this room, there are people that uh, reach out to over 10 million people. Some of them on their Instagram pages and uh, Twitter handles, they talk to over a million people on a daily basis. 
Uh, so the uh, outreach is quite, quite extensive and elaborate. And uh, they came to uh, share their thoughts about the future of this country with the president and uh, to also commend the remarkable work that he's doing out there and to assure him that uh, they will fully support him. So it's a very, 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 very important day for us. The message from them is that they are with him 100%. And I assure you, it's not unusual. During the event, the artists were promised by government of adequate protection of their intellectual property rights. Most of the times when they cast films and uh, when they sing songs, uh, piracy takes over and uh, the benefits that ought to accrue to them ordinarily does not. And uh, we've given them those assurances that will strengthen the institutions that are supposed to take care of uh, protecting their copyrights and their proprietary rights. The Carnewood stakeholders departed the State House with a promise to the Nigerian leader that as soon as campaigns for the 2019 election begin, they will individually and collectively stand to be counted. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Still from the State House, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says the commitment made by the federal and state governments to provide active leadership on polio eradication activities is a debt owed to Nigerians. Speaking at the National Economic Council meeting, the Vice President charged participants to work individually and collectively towards achieving the objectives. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu reports. Virus. Vice President Yemi Oshimanjo, who commended the stakeholders in the health sector for the achievement, stressed the need for the tempo to be sustained through effective collaborative efforts with all that matter, including the nation's neighbors. The federal government, he said, remains resolutely committed to the crucial cause of polio eradication in the country. Minister of State for Health Dr. Osagi Ehanere briefed journalists after the meeting. Nigeria is one of three countries in the world that are still endemic to polio and we hope to be able to take Nigeria off that list. The National Economic Council received the report of an ad hoc committee it set up in June this year on the revival of the education sector in Nigeria. The committee recommended that all governors to declare a state of emergency in the education sector in their various respective states and demonstrate the commitment to revamp education. The committee also recommended a federal government and state to allocate a minimum of 15% of the state budget or federal budget to education in order to revitalize that sector, to constitute special tax force to manage funds and oversee the infrastructural overhaul of selected schools for intervention across the Federation. Decision on the recommendations will be taken at the next meeting of the Council. There were also presentations on the state's gross domestic computation for 11 states as well as support for state governments for national sporting programs. Minister of Sports spoke specifically on the next edition of um, the National Sports Festival uh, is in high preparation. The Honorable Minister of uh, FCT has uh, agreed to host uh, the 19th uh, edition of the National Sports uh, Festival. He called on governors to support the process by preparing their participants on time. In the meantime, the council members were informed by the Minister of Finance that as at October 16 this year, the balance of the excess crude account stood at $2.09 billion, Stabilization Fund $21.9 billion, Naira, and the National Resources Development Fund $111.7 billion. Naira. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Now, the, the Nigerian Governors Forum says it is not against the upward review of workers' salary, but the challenge is for states' ability to pay. Chairman of the forum and governor of Zampara State, Abdulaziz Yari, said this after a closed-door meeting with other governors. We uh, are tandem with the, with the NLC to get uh, minimum wage rebuilt of what, but the problem of state is capacity to pay what is agreed. As we are talking today, we are struggling with the 18,000. Some of the states are being paid 30, 
25% up, or some of them share 50%. And some of them, up to, um, as a, I just lost my, my second point, saying there are some state uh, they have salary areas. So now, if we say, okay, we are going to do the minimum wage, we are going to or review it up, then it's not about only reviewing, about how we are going to get the resources to cater for that. The Tripartite Committee on Minimum Wage is expected to present its resolution to the federal government when completed. Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pengasan, has dismissed insinuations in some quarters that it will embark on strike. The national president of the association, Francis Olabode Johnson, who said this in Abuja at the commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the association, says, Pengerson will continue to play the critical role of contributing to Nigeria's economic development. Correspondent Lydia Sampson reports that President Muhammad Buhari, in a message to the event, described Pengerson as a stabilizing factor in the oil and gas sector. Registered in 1978 to promote, protect, and improve social and economic interests of senior and middle management employees in the oil and gas sector, many say. Pengerson in the last 40 years has weathered the storm as a foremost union discharging the responsibility of the oil and gas sector for national development. President Mohamed Buhari, who was represented by the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Emmanuel Ibekachuku, commended Pengerson's role in leading the advocacy for local content in the industry. I bring you warm greetings from President Mohamed Buhari, who congratulates you all on this occasion of the association's 40th anniversary expressing his pride at the relentless collaborative effort this association makes in ensuring stability in our oil and gas industry. Group Managing Director of NMPC, Mekan Tibaru, says the association has met the expectation of its founding fathers, having endured challenges. Henderson has endured because it goes of a leadership and followership ruled by foresight, full temperament and discipline. The guest speaker, Femi Falana, said the Nigerian oil and gas sector is not yet getting value for money. He therefore challenged Pengerson and labor unions to spearhead investment in infrastructure as well as ensure transparency in the oil and gas sector. President Muhammadu Buhari, Imam Abdullahi Abubakar, who saved the lives of 300 Christians in Jaws, and others received awards from the union. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. You are watching News Panorama. We take a break now. The news continues shortly. Do stay with us. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us. Working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA, growing with the nation. Together, no matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one. Let's live together. Let's stop fighting each other. Let us live as one. Families have become refugees in their country No matter our differences, show some understanding No matter where you come from, no matter your religion We are one, let's be together Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. 
Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, the people, great nation. Welcome back. Officers and personnel of the Nigerian Army have been commended for their invaluable contributions and selfless sacrifice towards defending the nation's democracy and keeping the country united in the face of insurgency. A statement from the Director, Army Public Relations, says the National Coordinator of Nonviolent Peace Initiative, Ambassador Mohammed Salmon, gave the commendation when he visited the General Officer Commanding 7th Division, Brigadier General Bulama Bu. The Ambassador condemned the activities of insurgents as he applauded the efforts of the Nigerian Army in degrading the terrorists. He also applauded the Army for the establishment of human rights desks in all Army formations to checkmate violations of citizens' rights. The GOC Brigadier General Bulama Biu promised to sustain the tempo as he assured of the Army's readiness to partner with any organization to tackle terrorism in the country. And now to politics. The Buhari media organization BMO has commended former Niger Delta militants for their decision to work for the victory of President Muhammad Buhari in the 2019 election. In a statement, the organization hailed the decision of the ex-militants to support Buhari's second term bid based on his efforts at deepening peace and stability in the Niger Delta region by initiating meaningful capital development through presidential amnesty program. While commending, commending the ex-militant stance, Buhari Media Organization, through its chairman, Ni Akinsiju, said it's a confirmation of Buhari's disposition to meaningful life-changing projects in the country's oil-producing region. The Buhari Media Organization, however, urged the ex-militants not to waver in its determination to work for the president's victory in the region, the People's Democratic Party considers its stronghold in spite of not doing much for it in 16 years. More political interest groups are strategizing on how to further the interests of the nation towards re-election of Buhari for continuity and good governance. Correspondent Usman Ali reports that one of these groups is Women for Buhari, which mobilizes more support for the Buhari 2019 presidency. These are women of conviction and their dogged commitment towards bringing President Muhammad Buhari back to office. Their commitment is ever frantic, almost desperate, to get anybody from any part of the country and beyond into their fold. To them, gender is not an issue. Using the name Women for Buhari is a depiction of their role in the home front, which is a platform for human existence and good citizenship. They say President Buhari is not only a symbol of good governance, but harbinger of glad tidings for better Nigeria and rekindling national values and ethics. We are rooted, the mobilization is there, and we are sure of giving the president a minimum of 100 votes per polling unit. The Women for Buhari Vanguard has attractions that cut across various strata in the society. Here, it is the sports wall that is attracted to it. A former president of the Nigeria Football Federation, Sani Abdullah Hilulu, has been enlisted just like many from various walks of life. I'm proud I'm joining this woman to say I am part of those who truly believe in the competency and ability of Mr. President. The group has linked across 36 states of the Federation and the FCT. Usman Aliu, NTA News. And now a bit of agriculture. With a successful achievement being recorded in crop production, agriculturists are advocating a sustainable policy that will strengthen input supply, especially fertilizer, in the country. This was the central issue discussed at a roundtable dialogue on achieving zero hunger to mark this year's World Food Day. Fatima Ali has more. Statistics by the Food and Agriculture Organization shows that 
In 2017 alone, more than 850 million people across the world suffered chronic malnutrition and hunger due to conflicts, global warming, and downward in economic trend. This roundtable discussion tagged our action, our future, which drew participants from both public, private, and international organizations, highlights the role of improved seeds and quality fertilizer in achieving zero hunger. Fertilizer quality control bill. We're also praying, Mr. President, to ascend the bill as quickly as possible because the more we don't have a law that protects farmers, we expose them to all manner of fertilizers. When you give a farmer an adulterated fertilizer, you reduce his production and even spoil the source. We have learned a lot by knowing the shortcomings and what we need to improve the development, I mean the production of maize in the country. The most important thing today that I have really picked was about good seedlings, which without it, you, your, your products cannot come out nice. Hungry man will do anything to feed himself. If you want a peaceful world, it's important that all of us focus on zero hunger. Convener of the forum, Philip Musa said, the battle against anger and malnutrition is again receiving global attention after its steady rise is threatening to turn back decades of achievements so far made. Participants at this forum are advocating redoubled efforts towards achieving the globally agreed goal of zero hunger as spelled out in Agenda 2030, noting that taking action is not an option but necessary step to a timely sustainable future for all. In Abuja, Fatima Ali, NTA News. Thanks Fatima. Next is sports. Super Falcons set to begin camping for 2018 Africa Women's Cup of Nations. As 2018 Ladies Golf Tournament tees off in Abuja Friday, Tamara Biwe tells us more on Sports Update. Head coach of Nigeria Super Falcons, Thomas Denneby, has invited 48 players made up of 29 home-based and 19 overseas-based professionals for the first phase of camping in Lagos, ahead of the 11th Africa Women's Cup of Nations, built for Ghana November 17 to December 1. Falcons, who are cup holders and winners of eight out of the ten editions of the championship staged so far, will know their group opponents when the draw for the eight-nation championship is conducted in Accra Sunday. Meanwhile, Equatorial Guinea has been disqualified from taking part in the 2018 Africa Women's Cup of Nations by the Confederation of African Football, CAF, and their slot given to Kenya. This followed the protests by the Kenyan team on the eligibility of six players fielded by Equatorial Guinea during their qualifying match on June 19. The Central African country is also to pay a fine of 10,000 US dollars. In golf, over 100 amateur golfers are set to compete for honors in the 2018 Ladies Close Championship, which ceremonially tees off Friday evening at the IBB International Golf and Country Club, Abuja. Lady captain of the club, Julie Acholonu, says arrangements have been concluded with a late charge for sponsors to fulfill their commitments. The format will be our veteran ladies are going to play with the guest men on Saturday, day one with the regular golfers the junior the junior category will be playing that day too then the second day that sunday it will be the profession that is our own champion is going to emerge that day the championship climaxes sunday evening with a dinner at the clubhouse with sports update tamara ibiwe nta news And that's it on Panorama. Nationwide is at 4. Join us then. I am Lydia Odidi Ochi. Bye for now. <laughs>
Travel as a form of communication has been made simple.